Okay, this comment definitely takes the cake in terms of bullshit. Hello there beautiful human, my name is Ryder CX and welcome to another rendition of Late Night Riders, the one talk show that takes place in a bedroom. So today we're actually going to be doing one of my favorite things in the world, which is judging other people's opinions. In all seriousness though, this is something I actually like to do sometimes when a new game comes out. I like looking at some reviews of the games, you know, some of the more critical ones in particular, and pick out some points that are a little bit more negative, and then just assess whether or not I agree with them. I think it's important to not look at a negative review and just be like, oh my gosh, this person just sucks, you know? Instead, I think it's a lot more productive to bring up the points that the review is actually bringing up and then kind of decide from there on out whether or not you agree with it. I also don't support bashing people's opinions. I am a very strong proponent against hate. So there's not going to be any bashing of actual reviewers here. It's just going to be a nice little discussion about whether or not they have some good points or not. I will have my own review of Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time coming on a later date as Activision was so kind enough to send me a review copy and I've been so far just having a blast of it just going through it. So look forward to my review once I 100% the game in 2070. But for now, I wanted to take a look at some of the more negative reviews about this game and kind of pinpoint what they're saying and assess whether or not we agree with them. Likewise, there's actually not that many negative reviews about Crash Bandicoot 4 here. Most of the reviews have been very positive. I think the Metacritic score currently is like 86, so that's pretty good for a 3D platformer, let's be honest here. I think the only 3D platformers that still get 9s and 10s are basically Mario, so it's a really tough standard to live up to. But one of the reviews I picked out that were a little bit more negative is from Polygon, and so only thing I know about Polygon is that it's a shape. But clicking on this review, you're hit with the caption, Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time is a brand new game that's already hopelessly out of date. Uh, this is definitely the first time I've heard someone make this kind of joke. Here's the first point I'm going to bring up. All these levels and settings look gorgeous, using the same bright, vibrant colors the series has always had, except transported 20 years forward in time and brought all the way into high definition. Unfortunately, no matter how good they look, each of the game's dozens of the levels feels more or less the same to play, just with different combinations of floating platforms, enemies, and endless pits for Crash to jump over. I highly, highly disagree with this. Like, this could not be farther from the truth. How are you gonna say every level in Crash Bandicoot 4 feels like the same? First of all, there's a wide variety of environments in here that looked entirely different. Everything in this game is so unique based off of the visuals alone, but if we're gonna go beyond visuals, there's plenty of in-stage gimmicks that make each of these levels different. There's a circus-like town, for instance, where there's drums that act like springs that are in no other level. There's also the ice levels and the ice physics actually have a huge impact in terms of how you maneuver through the game. There's this Japanese like townhouse village that has green magic being thrown everywhere. There's so much different stuff with each of these environments. It does not make sense to me to just say that all the levels blend in together like that is just so far from the truth. You could say that you're not really that fond of the level design, sure, but to say that it's all the same, uh -uh -uh -uh. I highly disagree with that. While the idea of creating a true sequel to Crash 3 is perfectly appealing on paper, Crash Bandicoot is a series that needed to be brought out of the 90s, not one that needed to try to recreate the games of that era. So this comment is basically saying that Crash Bandicoot 4 is acting like a true successor to the original trilogy. It tries to stick very, very closely to the original formula. I mean, it's called Crash Bandicoot 4 after all, so it only makes sense. I actually kind of agree with this in a sense. If you checked out my previous video on Crash Bandicoot, I talked about how the series needs to evolve to kind of adapt to modern times, just because the way that people play games now is a little bit different compared to before. If you want to check out that video, I'll link in the top right corner. But whether or not I think this game sticks too close to originals, I disagree with that. I think this game does enough to modernize the adventure while still making sure that fans of the original trilogy will find plenty to love about this game. I mean, the fact that you can choose from modern and retro mode alone is a great way to adapt this game to modern players while still giving the older players something that they want. I mean, sure, the level design is still very, very similar in terms of like the cheapness and the difficulty to the original trilogy, but at least you have options to kind of help the game to feel a little bit more modern. But 
but how modern can you go before you start actually changing the Crash Bandicoot experience is my question. And I feel like Toys of Bob actually hit a really good balance here. Compounding all of this is the fact that for most of the game, the biggest threat to my survival and success was the game's fixed third person camera. Rather than any of the actual obstacles in a level, I'd often jump toward a platform only to discover that it was larger or smaller than I had thought, simply because of the camera's strange perspective and warped depth perception that resulted from it. Other times I would die because an enemy's attack range wasn't quite clear, thanks to the camera being situated at an odd angle. I sort of agree with this to be honest, I did have some deaths in this game where I died because I thought I was a little bit closer or a little bit further from the next location. This is something that's really apparent in some of the rail grinding sections in particular when the character just seems really far out and it's a little bit tough to see what's coming next and I hated that, you know? This usually happens more so when it's in a 3D plane, meaning that you're behind the character, meaning you're facing the character's back and it's slightly angled in a way where it's kind of tough to see and so I totally get where Polygon is coming from with this comment. I don't think it happens as often as they say it does and as you keep playing the game you kind of learn the depth perception a little bit more and you encounter the issue less but it is something that I wish they would have just given you some basic camera controls just so you can more closely see where you're going that way you can avoid deaths that are not really based on skill but more so based on your sight. And this is an issue that was apparent in the older games too and so at least the game sticks to the traditional feel but I feel like this is something that I hope for the future they try to modernize a little bit more because I don't really feel like that's challenging I feel like that's more so like oh I died because the game angled me in a way where I couldn't see where I was going. So that's kind of it for the Polygon review overall they had some points I agreed with and some points I disagreed with let me know if you agree with anything they said in the review I'll leave a link to the full one in the description box below if you want to see it for yourself. But the other review that I pulled up is from the site called VG247. The first point I want to bring up is something that contradicts directly the Polygon review, so I thought this was really interesting. Let's get something out of the way at the top. This isn't the Crash Bandicoot you remember. Does that mean it's bad? No. Does that mean it feels nothing like the original trilogy? No. It just means that this numbered sequel, built by a different studio, is a world apart from the original three games. VG247 is basically saying that this game is nothing like the original trilogy. I mean, it has some similarities here and there, sure, but it's saying that it's in a whole different world from the original games, which is in deep contrast from Polygon, who said that this game was too much like the original trilogy. So who are we to believe? My personal opinion, I think the game sticks very closely to the original trilogy, but it also is able to implement a bunch of things and make the experience a little bit bigger than it was before. I'm siding with Polygon a little bit more, it does feel like a much more traditional experience than I think VG247 is making it out to be, but that's just my opinion. Some design groups really take away from how slick and fair the original trilogy felt too, leaving some deaths or completion whiffs feeling frustrated and mean spirited. I don't really agree with them saying that the original trilogy was so much more fair than this game. From what I've played so far, Crash Bandicoot 4's difficulty is pretty on par with the original trilogy. I think a little bit more closer to 1 and 2 rather than 3. I have heard stories though that this game gets increasingly hard as you get through it and so I'll just make my opinion on that once I get through the entire game. But to say the original trilogy was fair I don't agree with that. There were plenty of cheap deaths in the original trilogy too. The only reason I think this person might think that original trilogy was fair was because they probably played it tons to the point where they understand the game and they memorize all the levels that every time they play it, it feels completely fair because you see everything that's coming towards you. You know what's going to happen. It's not like a first time player like this person is playing Crash Bandicoot 4 for the first time where everything is a surprise to you because it's brand new you never played before. So. Eh, I don't agree with this comment. I will say though that since I said the original trilogy is not really fair, I don't really feel like Crash Bandicoot 4 is that fair either. There's plenty of cheap deaths and such in Crash Bandicoot 4 as well. It really is a very similar game to the original trilogy. Back in the day, getting a gem for collecting all the crates felt fair. It was only in extreme cases that levels would have crate numbers exceeding 150. Here in It's About Time, you're routinely tasked with collecting over 200 of the little wooden bastards, missing just one making all your effort redundant if you're going for a perfect run. I can say that I actually do agree with this comment. I feel like the levels in It's About Time are longer than the ones in the original trilogy, which makes sense because this game is 20 years later. It's bigger, brighter, and just so much more of a production than the original trilogy. So it makes sense that they would try to make the levels bigger as well. I just feel like some of the levels dragged on a little bit too long. Like there was actually this one level that I played that had a boss at the end, and I'm like that boss could have totally been its own level. Like it totally could have been. So why is this being tacked on the end of a level? So 
sometimes when I see over 200 crates in a level, I'm a little bit discouraged and a little bit annoyed just because these levels are really frustrating when you first get through them. So I think I would prefer them if they were shorter and I was able to digest them in smaller amounts, but that's just my opinion. Some people like the longer levels and thought the original trilogy was too short, so it, it's either way really. It's a shame then that some of the level design choices don't really pair up with the engine choice what Bob has built this love letter to 90s platforming games in. Loose and floaty physics and abundance of different mechanics that often feel part baked and some design choices that feel sadistic rather than simply difficult leave this approach to Crash Bandicoot feeling less like a true sequel and more like a licensed spin-off. Okay, this comment definitely takes the cake in terms of bullshit. This is a really insulting thing to say about this game. To say that it looks like a licensed spin-off it's just a huge slap in the face. A licensed spinoff kind of insinuates that this game had no effort put into it and it's just trash. And this game definitely had all the love and effort poured into it. You know, you can just tell by looking at this game that Toys for Bob were passionate about this game and want this game to be great. And they were doing everything they could to make sure that it was an amazing experience. The game just has the most gorgeous and wacky looking environments. The music is beautifully composed with a signature wacky catchy feel of Crash Bandicoot and there's numerous amounts of extras and unlockables that you can go after in this game beyond the main campaign. And there's more levels than you can count with multiple characters too being thrown in there. This game is just huge. It's over 40 gigabytes on my PS4. This is not a licensed spin-off. This is a legit triple A title and I don't know, it's just like, it's fine if you dislike the game, but to insinuate that they put no effort into it and that it's just a piece of trash that everyone's gonna forget about the next day, no. No, that's that's totally wrong. This is totally not what this game is. Crash Bandicoot 4 is not for everyone. I think we can kind of establish that there's gonna be people forever and always that are just not gonna get Crash Bandicoot. And that's totally fine. For the longest time, I didn't really get Crash Bandicoot. It took me a little time for me to really get into the franchise. But once I got into it, it's something that I'll definitely never let go. This is such a rewarding and fun franchise to be a part of. And I'm just so glad to see Crash Bandicoot back in the way that he is right now. It's really special to see, especially growing up with Crash Twin Sanity. I never thought I would see Crash Bandicoot back in the limelight like this, but I mean, it's pretty awesome and really heartwarming. But that's pretty much everything I got from these reviews. If there's any other reviews that you saw that you wish I would have talked about, then go ahead and link them in the comment section below and let me know what you think of it and what are some points you think that reviewer was wrong or right about. Let me know what you think about these reviews and whether you agree or disagree with them. I would love to hear your thoughts and let me know how you feel about Crash Bandicoot 4 so far you've been playing it. What's your favorite? Favorite part, your least favorite parts, I want to know all of it. But if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna get back to Crash Bandicoot 4 and start thinking about what score I want to give it. And so this is Riders, riding out. It appears we have a common enemy. Perhaps there's a way out of our endless cycle after all. <laughs> huh? Uh, okay. Um ten 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 ten. Thank you so much for watching this video. Special shout out to The Nerd Corner, Killer Lemurs, Team Riot with Sign Gamer, Johnny Hinton Ortiz, Trash Q, Abraham Muner, and Mass Muner. These are my Patreon slash YouTube members. If you'd like to become a Patreon or YouTube member, get access to a whole bunch of different perks, then please check out the links in the description box below. But alright, this is Riders, riding out.